Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Peace Theater. So when we last left off, we had just gotten inside of the Fire Temple, which is where we are at now. And there are two fire keys in the room I'm just going to go ahead and take care of real quick. Oh, come on. Uh, fine. Okay. Now, the only way I can go at the moment is into this room, and we're going to have a very short cutscene when we get in here. And if you remember from the last episode, Darunia, the leader of the Gorons, well, there he is. He's come to the Fire Temple to defeat, defeat the great Volvagia, the evil dragon that's awakened inside of the Fire Temple. And he remembers who you are, which is pretty cool. And the reason that all of the Gorons were missing is that they've all been captured and brought here and are going to be fed to Volvagia. And so he's going to go and try to uh, take out... Um, the dragon, and here he mentions the legendary hammer. That's actually a uh, spoiler. That's going to be the weapon for this dungeon that we get. Uh, we got the fairy bow in um, the last temple, and then here we got the mega we get the megaton hammer. All right. Now, where I need to get is over there, and to do that, we're going to go this way. I need hook shot. Too far away. And we're gonna get some bottles because I believe there's at least one fairy over here. bombs, those are going to be very useful, and yay, we're stocked up on fairies. Yeah, let's see, we're going to get our ocarina back out and put our bow there. Okay, now, we're actually, because we can survive for just a moment in the lava, I'm going to jump down go over here. All right. Jump over, jump over, and we step on the switch, and we free a Goron. And I'm going to try to kind of run through this dungeon pretty quickly. It's one of my favorite dungeons to play. Um, I've always enjoyed the fire dungeons in most Zelda games something about them I just really enjoy. Uh, each Goron will give you a little bit of a secret um, about this dungeon, but also pretty much every Goron that you free is also going to be in the room with a key, and we have to make sure we free all of them or else we can't actually get through the dungeon. So it's one of those things where unless you're cheating um, to get through rooms and to glitch your way through a room, um, you're actually going to end up freeing all the Gorons, which is kind of cool. Alright, here we are. First, I'm going to go over here. Free this one. <clears throat> this is actually a really important thing. Um, some walls that you can destroy with a bomb are going to sound 
different if you hit them with your sword. Um, and there's that. And now if you look up there, there is a time stone. And so we need Song of Time. And it will move that stone down in front of me. And open up the door up here. Now, secret to this room, you've got all these tiles that are going to fly at you. Honestly. Just sit in a corner and let them bounce off you. Then we have these wonderful like-like up here. These guys will eat your shell. Eat your shell. Eat your shield. Sorry. I don't know where that came from. And we have a gold skull show. He's just above sword range. That's okay. And that's really the only thing in this room. But yeah, if you get sucked in by one of the like-likes, they will eat your shield, and then you have to go get a new one. Um, sometimes when you kill them, your shield will pop out, but if memory serves, there have been times I've done this, and my shield didn't come back to me. So that's it for that side of the room. And I could go ahead and go in there, but I'm trying to remember. I just don't want to do too much backtracking. We're going to head to the other side of the room and make sure that there's nothing more I can do over there. Oh, yep. So this is what I'm talking about. It just looks different, but it sounds different, too, when you hit it with your sword. And... We're just going to do that. <clears throat> backing up, backing up. Perfect. Let me get another key. That's it for this main room. And now we move right along. Okay, here we slide down. And I need to get my bow see if I can hit him. There are some keys hanging out up there. And I'm going to try to take him out so I don't have to deal with him. Because now I'm going to climb up. This is kind of tricky because you are standing on like a two pixel wide thing to get onto there. I don't know exactly how many pixels it is, so if anybody jumps in the comments and says something about it, I, I'm just going to ignore you. <laughs> um, Now 
now, up we go. There's that key. Okay. Now there's a gore on there, but we can't get to him yet. And what we're actually going to do is go up a level. These guys, when you kill them, will give you magic, so if your potions are low, um, you know, or your, yeah, I should say, your, your magic spell stuff is low, like your green bar. I don't know what's with me today, I'm saying everything wrong, I apologize. It's been a very long couple days for me. Uh, kind of going stir-crazy with all of the lockdown, to be honest. But, that's okay. Been able to spend some wonderful time with my family and kids, and it's been nice. So, there is some fire up there, and this switch here is going to make it go away. But, I need some time delay to uh, get up there, because it does go very quickly. going to just make it. And the fire is back. Alright, now this room. So here we have a classic Zelda viewpoint, the top-down look. We're going to avoid those. Now we need to run around and we need to find the Gorons that are in this room. There's a few of them. Let's see. One's in here. Stop, chop, and roll. Okay. And I think the Goron suit link, the red tunic and hat, I think is... It's a toss-up. The blue that you're going to see later on looks really good, but I'm a fan of the red. There's a door that needs a key over there, but we're not going to go there just yet. I just want to make sure I get all of my ground floor peeps. I don't like going back into rooms unnecessarily. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine. So when, uh, whenever I can, I try to maximize my trip through each area. And you don't have to talk to them either um, to get them to go through. Um, but I feel really bad just leaving them because I feel like if I don't talk to them and they're waiting for me to talk to them, then they're just waiting around to be eaten and that's just mean. Even though we're going to kill the dragon before this is over. All right, now. Oh. Stop it. Now we can go through here. So that's all we can do from the ground level. And we'll come back to this part. It's that room. And that's actually a really... In the past I've found it to be a tricky jump, but I think just because I've hit it at the wrong angle. There we go. But I don't want to fall, because if I fall... Well, it's just not very pretty. I'm going to end up going all the way back down to that room uh, that had the time block I had to move. And I don't want to end up back there, because it's a long way back. And this should be the dungeon map. Hmm. 
back into that room from a different way shortly. Try to walk carefully here. Okay, now this room is on a timer. This fire is going to move and I have to get to a certain point so I can get up above it and it passes me. Oh, and that was bad. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and the flame will pass. And go this way and we're heading up there. And this was a different part of the room where we just got the dungeon map. We're going to come back to that room here in just a moment. Well, not right this second, but we will be coming back to that room. We're going to. That is a way down. And yes, just so she shuts up. Okay, and this was that Goron earlier that I couldn't get to. We'll get this key while we're here. And this is useful if you end up falling back to a previous part of the dungeon. Um, this actually serves as a good pathway to kind of skip a lot of the stuff I just did. And now we're going to climb back up. And these guys are easy to kill, I just don't feel like dealing with them at the moment. since he cornered me. Okay, I need to get over to that switch. So, line myself up. And jump. And we're not going to go quite over there yet, because I'm going to go over here and get... Uh, actually, I believe that switch opens up for that Goron, now that I think about it. Kidding me. Well, that was lame. Sorry about that, folks. I was unintentionally Z targeting that guy when that happened. That's okay, we'll get back there shortly. Just gotta go through this part again. Okay. 
That's annoying. Sorry, folks. I should have just killed him. That's what happens, trying to run through this quickly and end up dying in the process. That's the only thing in that room that I need, is just the key that that Goron has. The good news is, I'm pretty sure it will stay unlocked, but it might not. I may have to go back and hit that switch again, which would be really annoying, but so be it. Uh, nope, looks like it's still down. Cool. Which means that pathway over there is still open. And once I get this key, it won't matter if I fall down or not, because ultimately I'm going back to the same room. Either path. It's just the other path is a little faster. And that Goron's already gone. <laughs> just like that. That's okay. I'd run away too as soon as it opened. I don't even know what hint he gives you. I've been pretty much ignoring them for the most part this whole <laughs> playthrough. Um... <laughs> Probably telling me something stupid like time your jumps. Alright. And we're gonna go over here. And we're gonna go in here. Alright, we're back at this room. As soon as I jump down, the fire thing is gonna show back up. And this one, I want to pass me. And I need to jump on this platform anyway. So, it's convenient. Now we're going to try to make this jump. There we go. Which, it's weird to me that that's how it's designed, because it doesn't look like it should work. And it kind of looks like you just clip up to the ledge, but, yeah, whatever. It works. Okay, this room. So right now, I'm standing above the room where we met Darunia a minute ago. And we're actually going to go a different route at the moment. We're going to go down this side over here. Don't want to fall down that path. We have these little things that pop up that block our way. That thing that sprays fire. Thankfully, nothing here really damages us too bad. Um, so, you know, if we lose a quarter heart or a half heart, it's it's really not the end of the world. Um, and now we're at the other side. And actually, I'm going to go back to that room. Because I think memory serves. There's a time block that I can make appear here. I could be wrong, but let's see. Yep, there it is. Neat. And over there is a rusty block, and just hitting, just standing on it won't um, drop it. I need the hammer to uh, lower it down. And then same thing for that block and this spiked platform there. So now we can go down this side. That's a false door that will land on us if we try to go through it. We're going to go through here. And this will be the compass. Okay. Alright. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Sorry. 
So. need to do so we're gonna go this way I need to make my way over to standing on this it's gonna drop that down and now I have to run over there really quickly and knock it yep and missed my window just barely that's okay I know the path now. So just like the last dungeon, I'm going to play this episode maybe a little longer um, up until I get to the boss fight, and then I'll do the boss fight on the next episode. use a bomb on it. And that reveals the actual door. Okay, this is our mini boss. And I've got... We're going to pull out. I can use my sword as well, but I figure I might as well keep my distance while I can. Oh, come on. should be the last round. Not a particularly difficult boss. Um, ah, the wonderful magical platforms. Okay. So same deal with this one. I'll drop a bomb right there, and wait. Now the hammer is in this room, and 
we have a timed run. This is not easy. I have to run up there, up this very narrow platform. Not get hit by enemies. Not fall. And get to the chest before the flames turn back on. And I think that's one of the better runs I've done of that. <laughs> Usually that run gives me a lot of trouble. The Megaton Hammer. Um, this is a very, very useful weapon. Um, I'm actually going to be using it not just in this dungeon, but I'm going to be using it in the next dungeon as well to defeat the mini-boss, and I'll talk more about that when I get there. Um, and now, we are getting very near the end. Now, it is a two-handed weapon, and as such, you uh, have to you lose the ability to use your shield with it. So, as powerful of a weapon as it is, um, you can't use your shield with said weapon. And I'm out of arrows. So we've got just, really just a couple more stops to make and then we're well on our way. We got this key. Now the next place we're going to go is, uh, we're actually going to go back to the main room where uh, we met um, the leader of the Gorons. So one of the fun facts of why that doesn't do damage, as it was explained to me, um, is because the damage to Link is relative to the starting point of the fall, and at the time you fell, you were actually very, very close to the platform, and so it doesn't measure the growing distance between you and the platform, so if you stand on it while you hit it, um, that fall won't hurt you. That's how it was told to me. I could be wrong, and I, I'm fully able to admit that I, I could be mistaken, but that's how I was explained fall damage works, is that it measures the distance between two fixed points, but if you're standing on said fixed point, then when it falls, then the distance there isn't measured as great, so you don't actually take damage. Hey! <laughs> 
Same thing as the first time we saw this. In the very first Zelda game, um, if you had your shield equipped, you, uh, as long as you weren't using your sword hand and you were just standing there, things would automatically bounce off of you. Oh, the other thing is those like likes, they also take any special tunics you're wearing. So the fire tunic I have on, um, they'll take. I'm not going to need that. Okay. We've got another one of these guys. So he starts out as red, and then the second time you do enough damage to him, um, he's blue. And then he'll turn green. And green is his final form, if you will. This is one of those rooms where I have found the map and the compass to be beneficial. Um, is because it will show me what door I came in. If I look at the map where the red is, that's the, where I entered the room. Because it's easy to get turned around in here and not realize, oh, hey, you know. And I've gone back through the wrong door before. Do this, we'll get the boss key, and then we're good to go. quick things. This will take us back to the main room. I'm going to go get a fairy, refill my health, and then I will end this episode standing in front of the boss door. Uh, thanks for joining me on this journey, if you're still with me. I believe this is episode 10 of these. Um, so uh, it's, it's fun to play through these and do these, and I know a lot of it is just for my own amusement, but uh, if you have any games that you would like to see me play and provide boring commentary on. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, request them down in the comments section um, or send me a private message and I'll see what I can do to, to make that happen. I do focus on retro games as this is Retro Peace Theater. Um, so preferably games that are GameCube era and before. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to end this episode. Next level, we're, uh, next episode we're going to go fight the leader of this dungeon, Volvagia, and we're going to go for our... to release the next uh, spirit of the temple. Uh, thanks, guys. Bye.